Hi everybody, welcome. This is Stacy Rosendi, Education Program Director here at Golden, and I'm excited to share this evening with my colleague Allison. Um, Allison is our Communications Manager and Social Media Extraordinaire. It's a winter's night up here in upstate New York, and we're excited to bring you fluorescence, and we thought we'd have a little fun tonight. Um, you can see the colors glowing behind me and the colors glowing here on the tabletop. They're fluorescing, doing their magical thing. <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and get this demo started. We're going to talk about fluorescent paints tonight, um, the good and the bad, and then we're going to have a little fun um, showing them off and glowing. So Allison, if you could help us, go ahead and turn the lights back on. Thank you. All right, so I hope everyone's having a good evening. All right, so Golden makes fluorescent paints, and probably um, the, the most interesting thing about these is what you just witnessed. They're beautiful, bright colors, and artists are really attracted to the intensity that they provide, but there are some things you need to know um, about them. Uh, they will fluoresce, they will admit that light, which is just, you know, magic. It's so, so exciting. And, you know, by themselves, the chroma of these colors are intense and very tempting for artists to use in their work. But there are some things you need to know about them. Uh, fluorescent colors are dye-based. They are not made with pigments. Pigments are more durable. Uh, we, we use uh, pigments that are light fast most of the time. The only time we don't is when there's a re request by artists um, to have a color space that exists no other way. And that would be what we have here with fluorescence. Fluorescence are actually a dye-based paint. Um, they have a terrible uh, light fastness, but there are ways around that. They do fade. And that's something that artists use to, you, you know, artists need to know when they're working with these paints. Um, they are golden quality. They're in a, you know, wonderful binder that's strong and, and will adhere and do all the great things that golden paints do. Just there's no way around the fact that to get something to truly fluoresce, um, they will not be light fast. And if there was an option that was light fast, you better believe we would get on that. Um, we make fluorescent paints in our heavy body and in our high flow formulations. The high flow is the ink-like uh, viscosity and the heavy body is thicker. So I'll show you that and we'll talk about each one of these colors and we'll look at them individually under the black light. Um, and, and phosphorescent green is its own animal. We'll talk about that one as well. Okay, so let's look at them. So here's our fluorescent paints. Uh, one other thing I actually just failed to mention, not only do they come in our high flow and our heavy body, in the coming month we just released our brand new paint line, our matte acrylic line, the So Flat. I'll show you that tonight as well. This is a matte fluorescent, very, very matte, uh, beautiful paint, and uh, they'll be available in retail probably around March. I know we're shipping those out in February. Retailers will start picking those up so you can look for those. Uh, they're not available in stores quite yet. Um, so you get a little preview tonight. So we have them in the heavy body and we have them also in the high flow. Um, there's a few things you can do with these paints and then a few things that might be a bit of a limitation. The palette um, goes all the way from this beautiful bright sort of yellow chartreuse, the fluorescent chartreuse. You can see that the pigments are, they're actually not pigments, sorry, these dye-based paints are transparent. You know, no matter what you do here, they're going to be translucent. So we recommend that if you really want the best coverage, that you put a little white down in the section that you are going to add the fluorescent paint first and then paint the fluorescent on top of that. To build up enough layers to where you get coverage over a dark color uh, will take several passes. It can be done, but you'll get there a lot faster if you work on a lighter uh, ground first. So, you know, if you have a surface that's black, the area where you want it to fluoresce, you can mask that out and paint that with some gesso or white paint and work over that and you'll get, you know, you'll get to that brighter fluorescent color faster. We also have fluorescent orange yellow, fluorescent orange, fluorescent red, very popular, fluorescent pink, fluorescent magenta, fluorescent blue, fluorescent green, and phosphorescent green. Now this color goes on uh, in thin layers clear. It looks almost clear. I wouldn't say completely clear, but very close. There is a bit of a greenish color to it uh, when it's not 
uh, in its active state when it's just painted on like this. There's a difference between these two colors that I'll talk about in just a moment. Um, but you, you know, this is the stuff that you can, you've seen where you've like had little stars all over your kid's room or something. So this is a nice little surprise. Someone could sneak in imagery into their paintings that won't be seen until the lights are out. So the difference, let's go ahead and get into that. The difference between a fluorescent and a phosphorescent is that the energy from the light that's brought into uh, this color the electrons start to get charged and then it's emitted back out into wavelengths um, that show this color. Whereas the phosphorescent color, that energy from light that comes in excites those electrons as well and that then retains the light, holds it in the material and then emits it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the phosphorescent only. We're going to turn off the lights and you can see that over the white, it's glowing in the dark. This is because the light has been charged or captured in this material. It's slowly being emitted back out. What you don't see are the fluorescent colors. Those wavelengths of light will be admitted, emitted very, um, almost immediately. So they need actually UV to, to function. So we'll put on the black light in a little bit and show you how those glow. But that's going to be a quicker release of those excited electrons. So Allison, we can put the light back on. Thank you for that. I'm going to go ahead and look very quickly at the comments and then we'll continue. Joining a little late. How many coats of paint are in these swatches? Just one, really. Um, I, some of the brush strokes are a little thicker than others, but these are just one. Now, if it's on a white surface, it will look like it's opaque, but it's actually not. Because they're dye-based, there's really no way of getting them to be truly opaque. Um, if you put the paint on thicker, however, you will you know, eventually reach that uh, density to where you get more coverage and it then appears opaque, but the, the material itself is translucent or transparent. Okay, so let's see if there's any other quick questions. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Yeah, some of this stuff, not all stores carry everything, so you do, uh, you might be able to order some online. Yeah, okay, terrific. Let's go ahead and put some paint out. There's a few things you need to know. A lot of artists um, these days like to use fluorescence just as another color, which is, which is fine, as long as you understand that those colors are not light fast. Um, so what I'm going to show you very quickly is just a, I'll take some out of the container. This is the fluorescent red. I'm just going to do a blend with some of our open and show you how an, a, you know, a, a, a pigment like titanium white, which has some opacity, will influence the uh, phosphorescent qualities of these paints. Or not phosphorescent, fluorescent, misspoke fluorescent qualities of these paints. So once you start mixing with this, you can lose some of the capabilities um, to fluoresce. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this white, this open white, and blend it in with this fluorescent red to create a nice pink. You can see how the white has more coverage over the black bar, and as it mixes with the fluorescent red, it gets a little bit uh, more opaque because of that white pigment, um, but it'll also change how it fluoresces. So when we turn on the black light, we'll take a look at that and you can see how other pi pigments um, interfere in a sense with that ability to fluoresce. Um, some translucent pigments like this, um, what did I use here? Yeah, this was the manganese uh, blue hue, uh, will actually mix beautifully with the fluorescent colors. This blue and this pink made this beautiful magenta, but when we turn on the black light, you'll see how this blue then interferes with the light emission of that magenta. Okay, so that's something to know when working with fluorescence. If you want to maintain the fluorescent qualities, uh, mixing will inhibit that. One other thing I want to show you before we turn the black lights off again, well, a couple more things I want to show you. This is a test we did. We have an article, a wonderful article, a Lightning in a Bottle. Is that what it's called, Allison? Yeah. Um, and actually, Stacy Brock, who's on here, she's one of our Materials and Applications team um, members. Maybe she can post that article for you. Um, this test shows how the light fastness is an issue with these uh, dye-based paints over time, but there is a way around it. 
Um, so here is um, the paint that's been exposed to light uh, and you can see that it's like quite bleached and how it, how it changes and the orange is pretty bad there and the pink. On this side we do have a polymer varnish which does protect uh, somewhat from UV rays but the, the most effective varnish is our MSA varnish and this is three coats, two coats and one coat of our MSA varnish. So if you're an artist that just wants to use this as a color in your work, you really should consider varnishing. If you want it to fluoresce though, this would be, um, you'd have to decide what's most important because once you put several coats of varnish over your work, it blocks out so much of the UV rays that it no longer fluoresces. So that's something that you need to be aware of as well. This will protect your color, but it'll take away your ability to fluoresce. So we'll show that in a moment as well. Okay, so so flat. This is our brand new paint, this matte acrylic. And I, what I'd like to do is show you how that looks on a panel compared to some of our other paints. We are making this in a fluorescent as well, so the paint line will have that option, which means that you can get that beautiful matteness um, when you're, you know, looking at the painting, you know, just in the regular light, and then you can get that fluorescent effect. So if you take a look at this panel, we have three different paints here. We have our High Flow, which is the ink-like paint. You can see it's very much flat and fluid. Um, this is the heavy body um, in that fluorescent chartreuse. And um, you can see that it will retain some of that texture, like a heavy body paint would. And then this one, which is a very flat finish, it's very, very matte, um, is the So Flat paint. Um, it is a bit translucent but it's extremely matte uh, in regular light. So we'll look at that fluoresce in a minute too. What's fun is you can mix. So in this uh, board that we created for um, our sales teams, uh, you can see that we have some colors here that are not fluorescent and we have the so flat in the background. And when we turn the lights, the fluorescent lights on, you'll see that this will continue to fluoresce and it'll be really bright and then this will just kind of disappear which is a fun effect you can think about in your work as well. All right, so let's look at these under the black light, Allison. Let's have... Yay, so flat. <laughs> Let me take some questions here while she's getting that ready. Will, when will fluorescent and phosphorescent colors be available in Canada, please? I don't know. That's a good question. We'll have to get back to you on that one. No white, yeah, no white. We've had them for a long time, that's right. Terrific. Okay, what happens if you mix these with regular pigment paint? Well, I'm gonna show you that right now. So, um, fluorescing, look at this. This is the high flow, which is the ink-like. So imagine you can put that in a dip pen and you can write in fluorescence, so exciting. This is the heavy body. Look how those peaks pick up and glow it's so lovely and then this is the so flat in the fluorescent uh, chartreuse so now they're fluorescing in that black light this is the the purple part of the spectrum and it's hitting this those little electrons are getting excited and then they're pushing out the wavelength of the light that you see which is super super neat so here's what happens when you mix it uh, with the color and i have also another one right here to show you so this is the fluorescent pink mixed with the manganese blue hue which then you get this violet. And the violet you can see has little pieces that, you know, kind of the pink is pushing through, trying to fluoresce a little bit. Let me pull that up so you can see it a little bit more light. I have too many bottles here. <laughs> there we go. And um, you can see that it just wants to do a little bit of that fluorescing where that pink kind of, you know, is still visible through those transparent layers, but it's not gonna do what this does. As a matter of fact, you could pretty much say it doesn't wanna do much. So when you mix with other colors, you're going to lose that ability to fluoresce as much. Now here, it, you know, I did a gradation. So you can see where I have more of the fluorescent red. It's really glowing. And then as I move into that titanium white, I start to lose some of the glow. Here I get some with that pink because it's primarily fluorescent red. You know, you have a lot more of that. So that's what happens. And then if we take a look at this, um, right here, you're not seeing the fluorescing in the same way that you would see it here. It's just more of a color. You're just getting light and you're just seeing color. It's not glowing. And it's not glowing because that, um, 
that MSA varnish is blocking out most of that spectrum. So you're, you know, if you read the article um, that we have, Lightning in a Bottle will explain that as well. That you know, that's that you have to measure as an artist what's more important to you. Now, if we look at this board here, this is the so flat. If I can get this at the right angle. Um, you can see that the other colors kind of, you can see them because there is light in the room from the, from the black lights, but one thing that uh, the camera, if I put my hand over here, you'll see it. Um, this color in person is just glowing. It's rocketing off that surface. If I put my hand here, you kind of get that sense that it's really different. It's emitting light, whereas this is kind of soaking it up. Okay, so... Let me flip back um, to me with the black lights on. There's one more thing I want to talk about, and then I'll take a few questions, and I think we'll be good for tonight. I hope you've enjoyed this. All right, let me move myself over here, overhead. There we go. So one more thing I want to tell you is that, you know, Allison and I made these shirts. You can't really quite see it. We had a little fun in here the other day. Um, you can use our acrylic paints uh, on fabric. Uh, we recommend to use the GAC 900 um, to give it a softer hand. So Allison and I actually did that. There's Allison. You can see. Whoops, I'm getting out of the way. Yes. <laughs> so we actually made fluorescent um, uh, fluorescent shirts. And just you know, this this product is an, is a high. So anything that our paint will adhere to, so will the fluorescent. It just opens up a new creative avenue for you. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, it's a wonderful quiet night up here in New York, upstate New York. And having these black on, black lights on is just the treat. Uh, let me take a couple questions and then we'll sign out for tonight. Can we paint over acrylics? Can we paint over acrylics to have these beautiful effects? Well, Stacy got that. So yes, they can. It's an acrylic paint. Um, it'll bond to other acrylic paints. Uh, let's see. Excited to try So Flat. Hey, listen, tune in next month. We'll be doing a lot on So Flat to get you guys introduced to that product. Um, we are excited about it too. It's beautiful paint. Um, so you apply the UV varnish too. So Stacy, thank you for putting that link up. I, yes, the UV varnish is really for protecting the color, but you lose uh, the ability to fluoresce. Okay, terrific. Well, anyway, I hope you guys have a great evening. Thank you for